Now, the two biggest carbon polluters in the world are sitting at the same table. John Kerry, the U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, has met his Chinese counterpart, Xi Shenhua. John Kerry began his four-day visit in full swing by holding a four-hour meeting with Xi Shenhua. This has per Chinese state media reports. Talks are expected to be on revving efforts towards curbing climate warming emissions, especially methane emissions. They contribute to almost 30% of global warming levels. John Kerry says Beijing has agreed to have a methane action plan. China drafted a plan with concrete measures to curb methane emissions from energy, agriculture and waste. Reports say Washington hopes Beijing will unveil the plan before the next UN Climate Conference, that's acronym the COP28, which will be held in Dubai this December. China aims to achieve net zero CO2 emissions by 2060, but it is yet to set targets for methane and other non-CO2 greenhouse gases. The talks will also include limiting coal use, curbing deforestation and helping poor countries address climate change. China says it has made relentless efforts to combat climate change. Now for more on this, we're joined by Andrew Wood from Hong Kong. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. The focus, as I mentioned, is to be on curbing climate warming emissions, especially methane emissions. Can we expect any concrete deals on the same? Well, look at what John Kerry, the uh, presidential envoy on climate change, said a couple of days ago. And he told Congress uh, in Washington that what he hoped to get out of this trip was uh, to, reset, uh, to reset relations and start talking again, improve communications, but not to concede anything. So by saying that, it suddenly th sounds like it's difficult, going to be difficult for any concrete um, any co anything concrete perhaps to come out of these three days of meetings. The, uh, the idea that uh, cut, cutting or curbing or at least saying that they want to cut or curb emissions of methane would be a good thing as you were saying. Uh, methane accounts for really between about a quarter and a third of the effects of uh, global warming and so therefore cutting it, especially things like em uh, emissions from cows and, and other farm animals and so on, would be, a, would be a very, very good thing. But this is early days yet. Remember, this is the first time that uh, America and China have had face-to-face -face talks about climate change since August last year. That was when a senior American politician visited Taiwan, the country that, uh, uh, sorry, the island that uh, Beijing says is, is, is part of China and Taiwan as a self-governing nation or self-governing island says that it isn't. Mm. And uh, so China showed its displeasure by breaking off the climate uh, change negotiations or climate change talks, which is a pity because this is one of the areas where uh, Beijing and Washington have been, perhaps some of their cooperations have been the most fruitful in the past. Right, absolutely. In fact, China did draft a plan as well. It aims to achieve net zero CO2 emissions by 2016. Are there any concrete mechanisms, however, in place for the same? I think at the moment there are worries about um, how China measures uh, emissions of greenhouse gases. Um, that, the, that if you can't measure how much uh, how much is being emitted, then it's difficult to try to tell how, how much progress is being made towards cutting them. Uh, 2060 is an awful long way away at the moment, and certainly the consensus seems to be growing that more needs to be done sooner. China is still relying an awful lot on coal. It's still bu uh, building coal-fired power stations to, uh, to produce electricity. The economy is still growing. It's not growing as fast as uh, perhaps people had anticipated at the beginning of the year as COVID ended. But China is a big place. It's still growing, far it's still growing and it's going to need more and more electricity. And at the moment, it looks as though that's coming from coal. Right. Now, just for more clarity on this, Washington does hope that Beijing will unveil the plan before the next UN Climate Conference, COP28. How important do you think collaboration between Washington and Beijing is when it comes to climate action? Well, if the world's two biggest economies and two biggest emitters of greenhouse gases, uh, and to be fair, they're both the, uh, the two biggest investors in technology to try to stop climate change, if these two big countries can't get on with each other and can't find something to agree with, then it doesn't really hold out much hope for the rest of the world. So if China, if America can put aside their differences on so many other things like economics or even philosophy, 
um, then perhaps this will help COP28, which is due to be held, as you say, uh, I think it starts on the last day of November and is being held in Dubai in the Middle East. Right. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us on the show with your inputs on this. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.